We're getting set for the Super Bowl. Cowboys got over one hump this year, not the hump. Long playoff win drought ended when Dallas beat Philadelphia for a second straight week. Their run ended when they fell in Minnesota a week later. And during the season, safety Ken Hamlin joined us bi-weekly, gave us an inside view from the Cowboys locker room. And now that it's all said and done, you won a playoff game. Is that a successful season for the Dallas Cowboys? Not at all. I think that um, you know, we, we did some good things during the season, but uh, we didn't accomplish the, the major goal that we wanted to accomplish, which is still be playing right now. And I think that um, you know, it's, it's steps that we're taking, but I don't look at it as a moral victory uh, on us winning one, one game in the playoffs. You guys were the hottest team when you entered the playoffs. You came back down there in December. You were rolling off some wins. You knocked off Philly. Looked like it was going to happen. Was the belief happening inside that locker room? Well, definitely. We were confident. We, we knew that we had, we had an opportunity to do something special this year. Uh, we let it slip through our hands, really. And, um, you know, it's just going to make us even more hungry for next year to come back, try to build on what we did, and become better, a better team. You know how it is. You play in that market. You hear every little thing is analyzed and criticized. And I want to start with the team that you knocked out first, Philadelphia. Every year we get the when is Donovan McNabb going to be traded yeah. or released by the Philadelphia Eagles. And because they didn't win the Super Bowl, here we are again discussing his future. When is the time right for that type of decision to actually be made? You know what? I think if they make a decision like that, it needs to be done early. Um, but I don't see them doing that type of, that type of uh, move, especially right now with not having a, a defined or a, a challenged quarterback that can actually push him out of that position. Um, they have some guys that have been in the league for a while. You have Vic, you have uh, Cole, but they're really not proven. They really haven't done the job or been on the field to have that job uh, given to them w without actually competing with uh, Donovan to see if he, they really earned it. Yeah, they want McNabb to win a Super Bowl up there. He's won a lot of playoff games, hadn't quite gotten over the hump for your quarterback. They were waiting for him to win a playoff game. He got that monkey off of his back. Yeah. Does Tony Romo feel a similar pressure to Donovan McNabb of the expectations that are, that are placed upon him well, in I Dallas. Think, I think that he gets, he gets a lot of pressure on him. I mean, wearing the star, being the starting quarterback of, of the Dallas Cowboys, you have a lot of pressure. You have a lot of responsibilities put on your shoulders. Um, he, he, he wears it well. I mean, I think he did a great job this year really leading us, going out and playing a position well. Um, but it's still, we still got things to do. And it's not just him. I think that as a team, we're going to grow. We're going to continue to grow get better and, and push for that playoff uh, and that Super, Bowl, that Super Bowl run. His disposition seemed to change at the end of the year. He started, it seemed, at least from the outside, he was taking things a lot more seriously. I don't, I don't know if that was just our <laughs> perception or if that was reality inside that locker room. At least it felt that way watching I him. Think, I think he took this season uh, and took it, took it real serious. I don't know if you can look at seasons before and say he didn't take it serious, but I know that he was a leader. He was a leader for us this year. He went out and um, he was vocal. Uh, you know, he showed, you know, the type of leadership on the field and off the field. And, you know, we, we followed his lead. And I think that it showed, you know, because especially late in the season, we picked up our game even more. And we took it another level. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see if Dallas got New Orleans, if there would have been a repeat of what happened in New Orleans <laughs> about a month earlier. And maybe you wouldn't be sitting here right now, but you'd be uh, down in Miami. So since you had that type of success against the Saints, what did you guys do on that day that slowed that offense down? I think it starts with the front seven, um, you know, our front seven stopping the run, making them one-dimensional, one-dimensional, um, knowing that they, when they had to pass, they want they want to make the big play. And uh, you know, once we stopped the run, our, our secondary did a good job of keeping the big ball off of us uh, and making sure that everything they caught, we challenged it. You know, when they caught the ball, we hit them. They only had like one or two plays where it got you know past 15 or 20 yards, but we made a tackle after that and we made a play where they didn't score. So keeping a big play off of you and then making sure you're stopping the run and making them one-dimensional is going to be big. And so they're there, and there's some of the keys for them. How about Dwight Freeney here? Here's someone who may or may not be able to play. Put yourself in his shoes for a minute. Here, here's the Super Bowl, about the biggest game of your career. You had a torn ligament in your ankle. To what extent would you go to try to actually play in the Super Bowl? Uh, I believe he's going to play. Um, I, I look at it, you know, he's resting it right now, um, you know, He's, he's a guy, he's a competitor, he's one, I mean, he's one of the best, if not the best, uh, you know, defensive end out there in the game right now. Um, so I, I look at it, if he doesn't play, that's a big, big drop off of their defense. How could he play effectively, though, with that type of injury? That's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. I mean, but I think, uh, you know, we got a lot of tough guys in the game that play with injuries. Um, you know, you tape it up and you go. And, and you know that this is one game. You got one game, you got the rest of the offseason to rest. So, um... I look at it like that, and I look at it as a, the team practicing like he's not going to play so they can be prepared 
So if he does play, that's just a bonus for them. Would have been an interesting test for you guys this week. You guys shut down Philadelphia two weeks in a row. You shut down New Orleans. If you had your shot at Peyton Manning this week, he would have two weeks to look into your defense and try to plan against you. How much would you actually have to alter what you've done in the past to get ready to play him? Well, I think you don't alter anything. I think that you go with him with your game plan, uh, and, and you play you play sound defense. I think that you know he's going to pick apart, try to pick you apart the best way he can. But I think that with any quarterback, you put pressure on them and get them uncomfortable. They don't have that time in the pocket to really look at all their, their reads. So you you get the best result, which is he's looking at his first read. You make a tackle on that guy, and you look for second down, second down and long, third and long, try to get off on third down. From your perspective, what is it about him? Why, why is he so good? Uh, he's special. He, uh, you know, I think that he, he does things before he gets on the field that makes him so special. Um, you know, in the film room, looking at everything, looking at every intangible that you could throw at him and then attacking you at, at what he sees on the field. And, uh, he makes it to where you can't make the changes that you might want to make defensively put you in certain situations that might get you uncomfortable. And then he, he's looking at it. He has the receivers. He has the, the tight end, Dallas Clark. He has Reggie Wayne, the young guys, Garcon. I mean, their guys are making plays, and um, I mean, it just makes, <laughs> makes him even better. Took him about a quarter against the Jets, and all of a sudden he figured them out, and he was exactly. running, moving the ball up and down the field. All right, let's get a prediction from you. Who's going to win this weekend and why? Uh, I, I've said it all day, so I'm, I'm going to continue with it. I think that um, you know, New Orleans, if they're big play players, show up. You're buying into the, destiny I, I, a little bit. You're buying into I, I, destiny a little bit. That's all right. Big play players to show up, make the plays they need to make, and, and the defense creates a few turnovers. I think the New Orleans has a great chance of, of doing something special, continuing doing what they've been doing this season and, uh, and winning this game. Are they America's team? No, they're not America's <laughs> team. The star still holds that, that, that title. Just but, for a few days, though, uh, maybe? Yeah, you know what? They, they're doing something special. Something special for their city, something special for the nation. I think that um, they can continue going with it. You guys can have it back next week. Have thank, it back. Next thank, Monday, we'll give you. it back to you. Cowboy safety, Ken Hamlin, thanks for the entire season. It was great having you on. Thank Appreciate you for it. having me.